Good morning, my friends and followers. My name is Edward Washroom. I will continue the test for co-integration this uh, period. And I'm going to also teach you how to interpret a long-run result using the normalized co-integrating relationship or what we call the normalized co-integration output. So I want you to stay true to my channel this morning as I proceed. In our last class, we applied a study approach wherein we looked at the impact of stock market variables on economic growth. Well, this morning we are going to actually look at the impact of budget deficit on economic growth in Nigeria using sample or data that range from 1981 to 2021, a total of 41 years observation. So we will look at how budget deficits affect economic growth in Nigeria. By budget deficits, you are looking at the difference between the expenditure and revenue of the government uh, while by economic growth we are going to be looking at gross domestic product per capita so we are going to include external debt into the model we are also going to include the uh, exchange rate into the model just like what i taught you the other time before you estimate your johansson co-integration text you should actually know the appropriate lag for the distribution. And after the lag, you now proceed to estimate your Johansson co-integrating relationship. So given the fact that we want to look at how budget deficit affects economic growth, the first thing we are supposed to do is to go to quick. Once we hit the quick button, we get this drop down. You estimate to estimate bar. Once you hit the estimate bar button, you get this other drop down. You input your variables into this uh, endogenous variable space without changing any other uh, parts of this. If you hit the OK button, the EV will require you to close other existing uh, untitled var results. You say yes. Then it will take you to this bar estimation output, but this is not where you're going to. You go to view from this result, you maneuver to lag length or lag structure rather. You now maneuver to lag length criterion, lag length criteria. It will require you to select the maximum lag or the appropriate lag without changing anything. You allow it as lag three then your lag selection result will come up like this this is your lag selection result so the next thing you will do is to interpret this result and decide on the appropriate lag for the estimation with what we have here we observe that there are a steady six in each of these particular ones i'm been pointing we have a steady here we have a steady here we we'll have a here, we we'll have a here, we we'll also have a here. And LRO is sequential modified LRO statistics. FPI is final prediction error. AIC the archaic information criteria. XC is called the SWAS information criterion. HQ is known as the Hanna Quinn information criterion. Each of these information criterions are very, very necessary whenever time you are doing the Johansson or the ECM uh, estimation. So since we have been informed or we have decided to actually obey the AIC prescription, if you look at the AFC, the study is, uh, is, is, is here. And if you look at it horizontally, it coincides with lag tree. 
which means that uh, the appropriate lab for this study relying on AIC is lag 3 but if you want to rely on SIC is lag, uh, lag 1 because if you trace it horizontally you observe that it coincides with lag 1 if you also want to look at the Hanakuen you also know that Hanakuen is lag 1 so if you also want to split or to look at five of the information criterion three of the information criterions are advising us to actually use lag 3 why two of the information criterions are advising us to use lag 1 so if you say the principle of democracy then we can actually use lag 3 but however like AIC is where we are relying on we are using AIC which is lag uh, 3 so since we have accepted to use AIC as lag 3 to perform our Johansson co-integration, you go to view, you maneuver to co-integrating or co-integration text from your view, you hit the OK button, then you will be exposed to the Johansson co-integration test bar like this, without changing anything, you hit OK. The reason why you will not change anything, this is the lag selection we are expected to do. So if you minus one, then we'll have two. So we'll just leave it at that. We hit OK. Once we hit OK, you'll be exposed to a result that looks like this. You'll be exposed to a result that looks like this. This is the Johansson co-integration text, wherein you have the trace statistics and the mass against statistics. Recall that the trace statistics and the mass against statistics are the two types of the Johansson uh, 1980, uh, 1987, uh, sorry, 1919 uh, procedure. And uh, if you want to actually decide the presence or absence of co-integrating relationship, it relies on the trace statistics and the mass against statistics. And the rule of sum had always been whenever trying the trace statistics value is higher than the critical value at 5%, uh, then there is a co-integrating relationship and uh, whenever time such happen it doesn't mean that the p-value will be less than five percent but whenever time the three statistics is less than the critical value at five percent then there is no co-integrating relationship and what we have here we observe that 59.03 is higher than 47.85 that means that there is at least one co-integrating relationship in the whole of these statisticals here. If you also come to the trace statistics, we also have one co-integrating relationship because 34.05 is greater than 27.58. That means that the p-value is less than 5%. So in the whole of this, both tricks and mass against statistics, they are telling all that uh, we have co-integrating relationship. But this is not what I'm going to in this class. Our interest in this class is in what we call the normalized co-integrating uh, results. The normalized co-integrating results will be fine beneath the co-integrating text. This is what we have. We have co-integrating equation 1 up to 4 or up to 3 in this particular result. So our attention will go to the first normalized co-integrating relationship or equation. So what we will do is to copy this neatly to a PowerPoint for a proper interpretation. So let me copy this neatly to a powerpoint or let me take it to a powerpoint where i actually have extracted i have extracted these results and presented it in a in in a microsoft word rather where a proper interpretation will be given in line with the appropriate standard let's go to my microsoft word so this is my microsoft word where i presented the, co the normalized co-integrating outputs and I will offer appropriate interpretation but the first thing we need to note in the normalized co-integrating uh, uh, coefficient is that the normalized co-integrating coefficient is also used as a long-run result but for you to use it as a long-run result these parameters or this coefficient must be interpreted in their inverse form what do I mean? For instance, you have the, this is the variable for budget deficit. This is a standard debt and this is exchange rate. And the coefficient of budget deficit is positive. 
are insignificant because the t-statistics is 5.629187. But if you are interpreting this particular coefficient, you are expected to interpret it as negative, although it appeared as positive. But when you are interpreting this coefficient, you interpret it as negative. Likewise, the coefficient on external depth, if you are interpreting the external depth, you interpret it as positive, as negative rather. Whereas, if you are interpreting the exchange rate that appears negative here, you interpret it as a positive. What do I mean? For example, if I'm to actually interpret BGD, uh, how it affects GDPPC, I will not say that. A unit increase in budget deficit affects GDPPC negatively and it is statistically significant. I will also say that a unit increase or a percentage increase in external debt affects GDPPC negatively and it is statistically insignificant which means that this external depth coefficient of 0 0.06949 is not a significant variable that will cause variation in GDPPC reasons being that this particular variable here is computed manually by dividing this by this you get it this is the coefficient this is standard error and this is the t-statistics. Likewise, this is coefficient standard error and t-statistics. Likewise, this is coefficient standard error and t-statistics. So whenever time you divide the coefficient by the standard error, you get the t-statistics. In the place of exchange rate, this is the coefficient. If you divide this, this coefficient by the standard error, you get the t-statistics manually. So the exchange rate, if you are to interpret the exchange rate, you cannot say that the appreciation of the exchange rate will cause a positive impact on GDPPC in the long run because it's a long run result. And if you are looking at the budget uh, deficit, you cannot say an increase in budget deficit will lead to a reduction, a reduction in GDPPC or economic growth in the long run. Ceteris paribus. You always make reference to long run because this is a long run result. But had it been a no long run result, then you will not be that make reference to long run. So this is how we interpret and this is how we use the normalized co-integration uh, coefficient to actually make uh, 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 decisions that has to do with the long run uh, causations of uh, our estimation. So brothers and friends, if you find yourself in a situation where you actually want to stop uh, at the Johansson co-integration relationship and it's expected that you actually use the normalized co-integration coefficient to take decision or interpret your study and it will be accepted. Thank you and God bless you.